my dear Daddy, child. Daddy, can I come with you? Well, Ada, father, may I come oh, with you? Yes, yes, can I? May I walk round the estate with you? Very well, my dear. Hold my hand like a good girl. Oh, yes, da father. A good, good, good some girl. Not good some. Good some is not a proper word. <laughs> Hold my hand properly, Daddy. Father. Patter cake, patter cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. <laughs> Pat it and prick it and mark it with me. And put it in the oven for we Ada and me. <laughs> Piano by Jane Campion and Kate Pullinger, dramatized by Michelin Wanda, with Stella Gonne as Ada McGrath, John Dottine as Delwa, Ian Hogg as Baines, and David Bannerman as Alastair Stewart. The Piano. Five candelabra. Why do we need five candelabra? Why is this table so damned formal? Damned formal? Why is this table so Aunt damned Patricia's formal? coming to stay. Auntie Irksome. Pat! Auntie Pat! Do I like her? So irksome. Aunt Patricia, Ada dear. Why five candelabra, for heaven's sake? Shall I sing you a song, Daddy? That is a stupid number. One, two, three, four, five. Take one Once away. Once I caught a fish alive. Why did I let him go? Because he bit my finger so. Father, what shall we do when Aunt Patricia is here? We will take her on a suitably exhausting walk around the perimeter of the estate. <laughs> Five candelabra for one aunt. Ridiculous. This roast is tough. Take it away. It is delicious, Winston. Nonsense, Patricia, dear. It is inedible. Damned inedible, bubble and squeak. Here, have a piece of mine, Winston. Cut it into small pieces, dear. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. Ada, what are you doing? Counting the candelabra, father. I mean, what are you doing with the salt, child? Counting the candelabra, father. Look. One, two, three, four, you five. You have emptied the salt all over the table, child. Look, father. Look, Auntie Patricia. My name in the White Mountains. Here is my name. A, D, A. Me, Ada. Why do I only have three letters for my name? If I lick my finger with the salt on it, it is salty. Would you like to lick my finger, Father? It is bad luck to spill salt, Ada, dear. What do you think you are doing? Drawing in the snow, Father. You must throw a pinch of salt over your left shoulder to bring back the good luck. Tis not salt. Tis snow. Come here, Ada. Yes, Father. I Get out of my chair, Father. Will you help me, Auntie Pat? How dare you give orders to your aunt? Liston, I do not mind. Oh, dear, Father. When you speak, a mist of rain comes out of your mouth. Look, you have made Auntie Patricia's hand all wet. You, child, will go to your room and not speak for the rest of the day. A little harsh, Winston. Children must be obedient. Come, Ada. Don't touch me! Don't touch, touch, touch me! Enough! No more noise. Up to your room. No, no, you're a beast of touching horrible beast. Upstairs and silence now. Not to speak, mind you, that. Do not speak. I don't want to speak to you. Not ever, ever again. You're a beast and I hate you. Not ever, ever again. Why should I cry? Why should I please him with my crying? Whether he can hear me or not, I shall not cry again. I shall not speak to him again, never again. I will show him. I will show him every day and every week and every minute. One and two and three and four and five 
and six and seven. Come in. Ah, Ada, my dear. Come in, come in. Shut the door and sit down. Now then, what have you been doing today? Have you been for a walk? The sun is shining. Ada, I have punished you, and now this last week you have punished me. In my calculation, we are even, don't you think? I love you, Father. You know what they say, Ada? They say that I am your father, and you must obey me. Ada, I do not wish to strike you into obedience. Strike me? Well, well. It is not natural wisdom. There must be something wrong with her. It must have a name. The child must see a specialist. The doctor says there is nothing, nothing wrong. But it is not natural. She is perfectly healthy. But what is she to do? Five, you will not be here six, forever, Wiston. The estate is not what it was. It will not support her when you are gone. Please, Patricia. The child has no mother. You must be both father and mother to her. She is just like poor Cecilia. Poor wee Ada. Who will marry a girl who cannot talk? Just like poor Cecilia. Hunched over the piano like that, day in and day out. Well, Whiston, what are you going to do? It's no good. I shall have to call in the piano tuner. Well now, Miss McGrath, do you know what sort of piano this is? A Broadwood piano. Anyone can see that, can't they? It's written on the front. And made of rosewood, yes. Oh, such beautiful panels, eh? Delicate, intricate floral shapes, made by a loving hand, I'm sure, over a deep red satin colour. And here, see, under the strings, a delicate inlay of blonde wood, black felts and thin red along one edge. Oh, a work of art just to look at, eh? It's clear as a voice. Your mother played like an angel. Every time I came to tune, she played for me. You try. Now, will you play for me? Properly? My daughter was very tiny. She would sing to me. Excellent. She should prove a willing pupil. I wonder what this young man will think of the gate hanging off its hinge. His bones must be shaken by the ruts in the drive. His eyes must be puzzled by the paint peeling off the windows. She no longer sings, I am afraid to say. Well, we shall soon find some suitable airs for her to warble. I think it very unlikely. Then perhaps a tune from an opera. That may be more to her liking. My daughter, 
I do not quite know how to put this. My daughter does not speak. I am sure she will not be shy with me. She does not speak to anyone. I deduce from your appearance, young man, beautiful young man, that you once wanted to be an artist. Long hair, a velvet cap. A purple sash waistcoat and a black frock coat which flaps dramatically and makes you look like an absent minded crow. I have set up a trust fund for my daughter for her dowry and her education. It is out of this fund that you are to be paid. <laughs> that part of the estate at least is secure. Ada, my dear. What do you think of me? A tiny, perfectly dressed girl who looks 12 but whom you know to be 16. White lace at my collar and cuffs. Delicate, fragile. Do not be fooled, my good young man. I am a perfect, proud, miniature adult. Beware. Ada, my dear, this is Mr. Delwar Hausler. Good morning, Miss McGrath. Ada has a silver pencil and a metal box around her neck in which repose some small pieces of paper. Uh, that is how she speaks. She writes her words. Indeed, that is how I speak to you. I shall leave you to become acquainted. Dinner is at seven, Mr. Hustler. Is this to your taste? No, Mr. Hausler. That is too melancholy for my taste. Oh, Miss McGrath, how about this? Too noisy, Mr. Hausler. Too vulgar and too noisy. I see you like dancing. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Now, it is your turn. Sit down, please. Your hands are slender. The fingers slim, the wrist elegant and relaxed. I do believe that you will be able to play very well before too long. You read music, of course. I see. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Damn you, damn you, damn you, man. Who needs to read? Listen. 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 That is better. I shall teach you to read music. You will find it a revelation, I promise you. It is precise. It is complex. It is a new and beautiful language that you will learn to speak. A language. You don't know the first thing about a language. You don't know the first thing about speaking. We are a secret. Nothing you cannot achieve. By one day you may be as accomplished as I. You understand me, I think. However, you must learn to value formality and correctness over emotion that is unnecessary. We shall have no more dramatic flourishes here. Scales. We shall begin with scales. Do you know what a scale is? No. This is a scale. A major scale. C major. Now, 
You try. Excellent. Excellent. Such long, supple fingers. If I sit behind him, I can see his black frock coat straining across his back as he weaves his body across the keys. I have travelled all over Europe. I thought a music teacher would be someone ancient and rickety who smelled of pipe smoke and snuff. But you are young. I have seen Vienna. Vienna. You would love Vienna. The opera. You would love the opera. The sets. The sets. The curtain calls. The curtain calls. Sitting in the gallery. The cheapest seats, of course. The only ones I could afford. In the gallery. Vienna. In your velvet coat and purple sash. In the gallery. And I wonder, Mr. McGrath, I have been invited to a musical soiree. With your permission, may Miss Ada attend? It would denounce her musical education to hear one or two chamber pieces being played. I do not see why on earth not. Indeed, an outing among other young people may be just what she needs. I have a friend, a most talented young violinist, a Miss Judith McDougall, who is to play a string quartet. I would be most honoured if you would allow Miss Ada to accompany me, and perhaps you yourself. Why, of course. Of course. I shall accompany you both with pleasure. <clears throat> One woman and three men. How strange. Her arms are showing. What a tight jacket. Cut in such a daring manner. Such blonde, blonde hair. Such a daring face. Why is everyone rustling so much? One woman and three men. How strange. How strange. <laughs> Mr. Hausler, Delois, Patkick hands grasping his chair. He does not take his eyes off her. He does not hear anyone else. He is brushing her with his eyes. He is playing her with his fingers. She is the chair he is sitting in. His back rubs against her. His ears hear her every breath. I hate her. I hate her. Bravo! Come on, Ada. It is getting late. Mr. Hauser will want to congratulate the musicians on their most excellent performance. I will take you home. When I am 18, I will wear a daring dress. I will bear my arms and my face to the world. And I will play in drawing rooms. I will change my name to Daring Miss Judith McDougall. I will feel everyone's hands stroking my bare back.
And if I cannot be surrounded by laughing men in black frock coats whose backs sweat when they hear me play, then I shall remain at home with you, Father. I do not need to marry. I shall be happy in my father's house. With Delma. And my piano lessons. <laughs> Mr. Delwar Howsler, whose coat must be ripped from his back to give his hands more freedom. to the music. What are you playing? And the arms of the chair have dark marks where your fingers have lain. Dark, supple Judith McDougall fingers. Will you play a little more quietly? Piano, Miss Ada. Piano, piano. I'll give you piano. Is something wrong? Wrong, not a note. I mean every note. Shall we begin our lesson now? my fingers. Pity I missed. Pity I missed. Get out of my way. Oh, gently now. Where are you going? Something has upset you. Let A me bad go. Thing, perhaps. Some frustration. Take your I understand filthy Mr. hands I understand oh, my spirit um, Believe me, I understand. Now what are you doing? Kicking over the piano stool, you stupid man. Do you think I am stupid? Come. We will sit down and calm down. If I had chopped your fingers in half. I, I do believe you are jealous. <laughs> jealous? Of what? Of nothing. Of the piano lid. It can bang shut. I can bang shut and not say a word. I can cut the strings with my teeth. I can scratch the varnish on the lid with my fingernails. I do believe you are jealous of Miss Judith McDougall, Miss Ada McGrath. Well, you did it on purpose. You talked to her on purpose. You leaned over her on purpose. You carried her fiddle case for her on purpose. You smelled her blonde perfume on purpose. Well, on you purpose little lady. To make me jealous. You little well Her blonde lady. perfume all, all over your back, staining the arms here. of your chair. All and, the time. Oh, They say that for the first kiss, violins play sweet music, that birds sing, and that the heavens find sweet harmony. But all I hear are your lips, and all I taste are your hands, and I could grasp your fingers and break them in two. I can smell the deviled kidneys you had for breakfast, and taste the tea on your tongue. And I could break your fingers, but not when they are holding my shoulders. Come, Ada. Let us sit down now. Mm -hmm. 
sit beside me. Miss McGrath. Andante, Ada. Andante. Slowly. My arm against yours. We are Siamese twins. Note for note, finger for finger. We can play together. Play, Ada. Play, Ada. Play. Slowly, slowly. Adagio, Ada. I shall make a sampler for him, for Delois. I shall dream and dream, and the needle will bleed all over the canvas. I will embroider my heart in blood red. I watch you prowling round the grounds, looking up at my window, not keeping your usual company. Not seeking out Miss Judith McDougall of the blonde breasts. And on the eighth day, I shall go to the music room again. Miss McGrath? Miss Ada, I trust you are feeling better. You expect me to shake your hand? Well, no. Not on the eighth day. You can play to me. I am afraid today, Miss Ada, my fingers are not at my command. Perhaps you will give me a lesson. The pupil will turn teacher. Your cheeks and neck have turned pink like a girl, blushing like a girl, like Miss Judith McDougall would blush if she had any shame. Will you play? Play. Very well. I shall play for you. Why don't you apologise? Why don't you ask me how I feel? Why don't you stand up? Damn. Damn and damn you. So, Belwa, perhaps I can play your Chopin better?
he will unlearn everything he knows. He will learn what it is like to be unable to read music. The music will not let itself be read. He will learn to be afraid to play. What is this? What composer is this? Ada, tell me. Take your silver note case from your neck and tell me. I am the composer. It came to me in the night and this morning I played it. Very well, if you won't tell me. We will work on the Chopin. Now, from the beginning, please. <laughs> One day, everything will be as it was before. Before Miss Judith Bearbreast McDougall came between us. <laughs> when the world was just me and Mr. Delwar Hauser at the piano. And then you will stand behind me and I will feel your breath on my neck and your arm will steal round me enclosing my shoulder as you place your hand on mine and shape my hand to caress the keys. Your crab hand cradling my soft center. <sighs> and then I will watch you go for long solitary walks. Now you have no more friends for you are waiting for me to speak. And you are waiting for me to look at you. And you will write letters to me that you do not dare to post. And you rehearse speeches to me that you will never make because you know I will not reply. Good morning, Ada. Look what I have here. I have ordered some new music from London. It is a piece called Fantasia in F minor by Franz Schubert. Here. Come and sit at the piano, please. Now, what is he up to? You may not be familiar with this. What do you think? How am I to play all these notes? What is he up to? It's a duet. There, look. It's written for four hands. Four hands on the piano. Patty cake, patty cake, here we go. Wonderful, isn't it? And you are going to learn to play it with me. It is a challenge that most good pianists should be made to undertake. You make a better, richer music this way. Now then. We shall have to sit on the piano bench together. We shall have to share the piano bench. Come, move over a little. Make some room for me. I shall have to make room for him. He will touch me. He will brush against me. I shall smell him near me again. Thank you. He fills every scrap of space I leave. His right arm presses against my left arm. His right leg is against my left leg. I will not be able to play like this. I shall fetch a chair. Where are you going? No, no, the chair is too low and we will be too far apart. You won't be able to reach all the keys you need. Sit beside me. You'll see. Very well. So be it. I can't hear a word you say. I can only hear your thigh pressed against mine. The muscles move and flexes as your foot touches the pedal, as you move backwards and forwards. Our legs could move together as one with no effort at all. We shall play to the metronome to start, just until we get used to each other's rhythms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first piece eight, is romantic, eight, nine, perhaps ten, a little otherworldly for your 30, tastes. 40, 50, but as the hours 60, and days 80, and the weeks 80, pass, 20, 20, I shall find more 20, and more music 20, for us to play. 20, 24, 24, Marches. 20, 26, 27, 28, Waltzes. 20, 30, 31. Symphonies 20, by Beethoven 20, and Mozart 20, 20, transcribed. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, 40, 40. Until 40, 40, 40, we seem to play nothing else. meant for two. My left side is to 
dissolving into the music, like salt in a hot bath. There's a whole new world in my left side that I have never felt before. I was just me before. The shape of your leg, the shape of your arm, and the shape of your hand. On this ivory key, I carve and stroke every feeling I have ever had. And so I thought, at this stage in her musical education. But of course, my dear young man, I can't tell you how happy Ada's progress on the piano makes me. I hope you can come too, sir. You will enjoy the music. Oh, no, no. The journey to Everdeen will tire me too much. I'm a little under the weather. Oh, dear. I am sorry. You had better go alone. If you do not mind. I shall take good care of Miss McGrath. <laughs> of course you will. I shall retire early. The servants will be in bed by the time you return. Enjoy yourselves. Good night, then, Ada. Where are you going? There will be no good night without some music. Father is sleeping at the back of the house. The servants have gone home early. Father has retired to bed. We are, we are alone. alone. Ada. This is what we should late. Play. You may wake someone. You would like me to play with you? You will have to let me sit on the bench, then. We shall be a little cramped. But I will do my best. In the lamplight, as you look at me, you see I am beautiful. My face still. My skin gilded by the light reflected from the windows and the piano's polished rosewood. Fingers like filigree. Ada. In the music, everything is silk and warm and fires and makes me want all the music anyone ever thought of. I was watching you at the concert tonight. I felt you move and move me. And now we move, and my scent fills your thoughts. Your scent fills me. We are perfect, with a perfect one and two rhythm. And at the end, we will sit in silence, with the piano reverberating around the room. We shall turn to one another, and because we don't have to move, it will be oh so one, two, three, easy to give our arms to each other. I shall hold your head in its silk, and we will not need the piano stool anymore. <gasps> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, I shall bleed to death. I shall bleed to nine, to death, to silk and satin. And once I caught, I caught one, two, three, four. Come in. Ah, good morning, Mr. Hausler. Uh, good morning, Mr. McGrath. No, no. What can I do for you? 
the fact is... Uh, is anything wrong? I would like you to have this, sir. What is this? Sealed with wax? Open it, sir, please. <laughs> A mystery, eh? Very well. You will find my notice to quit. Your what? I wish to leave your employment. I, I, I wish to return to my family. I see. Oh, dear. Does Ada know? She, she will be heartbroken to lose her lesson. I should like to marry. Oh. Oh, indeed. Oh, I do see now. Forgive me. This all seems rather sudden. I shall go today, sir. I, I must go today. Oh. But it is Sunday. There are no carriages, no services of any kind. I shall walk, if necessary, sir. Will you not wait a day or so? I am already packed, sir. Very well, if you are settled on it. We are not very congenial company for a young man, eh? I am sure you will like to say goodbye to Ada. I will ask the maid to wake her. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I am sure she is still sleeping, and I would not like to disturb her with this news. So, I shall have to be the one to tell her, eh? She will not like it. I am sorry, sir. I will go and gather my things. I shall send for the rest of my possessions as soon as I am able. Miss Ada may keep all my music. Very well. Your daughter is possessed of a fine talent. A fine talent, eh? A dark talent, that is what I say. Fine, dark talent. Fine, dark fingers. A fine, dark night on the fine, dark carpet in the fine, dark room. With the fine, dark piano. Hearing and not telling. And watching with its black and white teeth bared. <sighs> fine, dark music between the piano and the carpet in a fine, dark... Ah! Don't go! Don't leave me! Don't move! Don't hurt me! Help! Help! The maids will talk. The maids are talking. The mistress has not bled for months. The seams of her dresses are being let out, like the seams of his black frock coat that brushed across his back when he played, like his back pregnant with music, like his velvet cap, like the two years of his life that he gave to me. Who is it? Who can have done this thing? Tell me, Ada, something must be done. A marriage must be arranged. Reparations must be made. Ada, my dear, you must tell me. Stop your playing and write his name. You do not have to tell me. You will remain in the house for the duration of your confinement. No one will be told. Well now, my little sweet Flora, 
my abundance and my spring flower. So what if the minister refuses to baptize you? And so what if they whisper and stare? So what if they spit at us in the street? It is because you are so beautiful. It is because they cannot bear to see you smile in my arms. With this piano, I be baptized. I wonder if all men are cowards. Thelwa would love you. I am sure he would love you. I wonder why he was such a coward. I wonder why he did not ask me to marry him. I wonder why he did not leave me a note. I wonder why he's not written to me. I wonder why I long to hear him again. Why I long to sit beside him and hear him play. Why I long to move my hands with his. And I wonder that I can sit here and wonder while you are hungry, Flora. My darling Flora. What are we to do? What are we to do? I have seen an advertisement in the colonial press, Ada, my dear. Thank you for your letter, Mr. McGrath. May I tell you a little about myself? A new start, Ada. I emigrated here to New Zealand when I was 20 years old. I came intending to farm to create as big and successful an estate as the one I left behind me in Scotland. My brother Thomas had plans to marry, and the family farm was simply not large enough for both of us. Alistair, are you really going to New Zealand? What about me, Alistair? I had heard that in New Zealand, Christmas and Hogmanay take place during the summer. This seemed to me a most excellent arrangement, although I thought I might be somewhat troubled by the apparent absence of snow. Alistair? My aunt Morag was already out here. She said that land is plentiful and a great many heathen souls to be saved. I can come and join you, Alistair. Later, Perhaps when you are settled. What do you think, Ada? Hmm? He sounds a most admirable and enterprising gentleman. Two uh, packing crates with the Bible and Shakespeare and Robinson Crusoe. The books have been wrapped in oilskins, Louisa, to protect them from the salt water on the journey. I've heard that it's a land of savages. A land of hot springs and cannibals. By the time I arrive, the savages will all be Christians and they will have scones for their tea. Bye, Alistair Stewart. Goodbye, Miss Douglas. I would like to see you. Will you follow me? Will we marry? Will you be my wife and travel after me? If you will, I will send for you, and you will come to the new land and bring your dresses and your hymn book and your fine Scottish ways, and we will build a dynasty together. I, uh, I, I would like to say... And so, Mr. McGrath, I travelled with others with iron bedsteads and china cabinets and dining room tables and Robinson Crusoe. A very suitable gentleman. And I dreamed of Louisa Douglas and her hair blowing in the ship's breeze and I saved her from cannibals and knives over and over again. And I continued to dream of Louisa Douglas as I built my lean-to to protect my Robinson Crusoe from the rain. And I set to work, cutting and burning and building. The forest is wet, and the creeping damp gets everywhere, even into my dreams, where Louisa Douglas's hair streams in the breeze. 
I have not heard from you for six months, Alistair Stewart. And I am writing to tell you of my wedding. I see that you are in a country at the bottom of the world. I hope this letter finds you well. Your very sincere, Louisa Douglas. And so, Mr McGrath, it is high time I found a suitable wife. Well, Ada? New Zealand. Britain's tropical mirror. A new country? New opportunities for you and the child? A place where no one turns away from me in the street. I shall miss you both, but we can write. Months and months and fish, dried and fresh, fried and boiled and baked and salt and scales. The calm of Asia Sea mocks us, so small, so frail. Trousseau and a dowry, some gold, some jewellery, and fish and scales. We are going to meet a man, and he will kiss us awake, and he will be a prince, and we will be princesses, and we will live in a palace. I shall do exactly as I please. One, two, three. How many months is it now, Mother? Four and five. Hundreds and hundreds of dark cliffs and mountains and a shore shrouded in mist. We're there now, ladies. Our destination. Honeyman Station. You'll be going ashore now. Oh, the ladder, ladder, ladder. What a poor thing we'll do with that in this godforsaken corner of the world, devil alone knows. Don't care if we die, lad, and down your wrist. Find the rope and be slippery on your feet. Oh, my piano. Oh, please be careful. They are, madame. No coach will be there. Is there a lot? Black, silvery sand, high and rugged cliffs. There's a dead shore. What does he mean, Mother? What do you mean? Cliffs, high and ragged, dense green foliage. Solid, a thick screen with nothing. No buildings, no people, no track. The end of the world. The place of my punishment. The place of my husband. My proxy place. Mother? Excuse me, Miss. Yes? We have to go back to the ship now. We can't wait any longer. It's rough. We have to get going. We will be all right here. The sand is warm. They will come and get us shortly. What if they can't get through to you in this weather? Maybe they'll come over land. From the forest? Yeah, I, I, I expect so. Uh, uh, will you be all right here? Yes. Mother will make a tent out of her crinoline, and we shall be very cosy. <laughs> You're a funny little thing. I, uh, I I, don't like leaving you here on the shore. Perhaps your mother would prefer to come with us to Nelson. Mother? No, thank you. She says no, thank you. She says she'd rather be boiled alive than get back in your stinking ship. Those are my <gasps> mother's words, you understand. Not mine. Well, you're damn lucky you don't slap your face with your cheek. Damn lucky. Stay here, then. Well, stay. Come on, lads. All right, get away now. Okay, great, okay. Oh, Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Mokes, never stop. Push yourself. Will the man come soon? We can wait forever here. We might die here. Poor little Flora. I shall miss father. 
Well then, let us have a look here. Ah, oh, just get my hand in. Cool, cool ivory. Will there be a lot of pianos here, Mother? Not bad, almost in tune. What shall we do when it gets dark? Will we have a candle? Can I be a great moth and fly around the flames? Or will he come before it's dark, Mother? Mama, I've been thinking. I will not call him Papa. I will not call him anything. I shan't even look at him. Oh, oh Mother, I'm so tired now. I shall hold you and stroke you. And wait while you sleep. Hmm? And let my thoughts swim back into the past. I am a bird flying south and my wings are wet. I am Jetson. I float. I want to go home. Please, when can we go home? Hush now, Flora. Hush. The suit is not exactly comedy, old foe. <laughs> well, there's an occasion. Oh, indeed. Indeed. An occasion that even warrants a tie and topper. <laughs> it seemed proper. I'm sure she'll appreciate the gesture. She'd better like the heat. I'm told she's sturdy enough. Calm and sturdy, her father says. Slight, but calm and sturdy. She'll do. Not like one of these frail little girls who fall over at the breath of wind. And her daughter? The child will get used to it. But no worries on that score. An ordinary face. I, I won't call him Papa. Alistair Stewart, at your service. How do you do? Alistair Stewart, a husband by post. Not much of the prince about him. How do you do, sir? My name is Flora. I was speaking to your mother. Not an unkind face. Neat, sleeked hair. I was speaking for my mother. We have been waiting for you. I am hungry. George Baines. Welcome to you both. With some biscuits and water for you. George Baines. Mm. A burnished warrior in khaki shorts. Wild, wild hair. Here. Shortbread biscuits. Thank you. Mama? She says thank you. 
What is she doing with her hands? She signs to me, and I tell you what she says. And she has a silver notepad and pencil which she wears around her neck. And she writes on that. It works perfectly well. Can you hear me? Mm, you do not need to shout. Mama is not deaf. Oh. Could I have some water, please? Oh, here you are. Thank you. Mama. Mama, do you want some? You uh, have a good many boxes. All the trunks have been labelled, and Mother has an inventory of everything. I helped her. Good. Good. You're small. I never thought you would be small. I shall grow, sir. I'm only nine years old. I meant your mother. I do not think she's small. She's much bigger than I am. What's in this large box? That is my mother's piano. Eh? A piano? <laughs> A real piano? Oh, yes. Listen. Well, I never. A piano. Oh, <laughs> thank We uh, must get going, Baines. Uh, tell the men to take the boxes. Aye. Are we to walk? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Uh, it is a short but uh, rather troublesome journey. Mud and so forth. The bush grows very quickly. We carry axes to tame it to bring it to order. There is nothing to fear. Come. We must go. Just a minute. Uh, uh, Mother wants to know about the piano. What about the piano? She wants it to come. It's too heavy. The men cannot carry it as well as all the boxes. Will they come back for the piano? We shall see. We can't leave the piano. That is enough. The matter of the piano is now closed. I'm afraid you must accept my authority on the matter. Baines, accompany the women, please. I must see all the boxes are taken. If you will excuse me. My piano. My piano. Come, ladies. The path's there. By the edge of the trees. We shall have to climb up quite a steep hill. Would you like me to carry you, Flora? No, thank you. I can walk. My piano. My piano. Tis dark under the trees. My mother must have her piano. Such exotics. Such abundance of filmy frond and bracken and moss. Such a jumbled jungle of living and dead, of trail and thick vine and leaves and roots. Such a... such an everything all at once. My feet are all muddy, Mama. Everything all right back there? I like the mud, Mama. Stupid boots and stupid skirts. If I tuck my skirt into my drawers, I can walk. Are we nearly there? Very nearly. The forest closes over our heads. Here we are. Melancholy oozes its way through these trees. This is my house. I'm afraid it's not uh, quite what you're used to. If I stand here much longer, I shall melt into the ground. No uh, light gardens and lawns. Uh, one day, perhaps, but not yet. We shall drink our tea from China teacups, nevertheless. My uh, Aunt Morag helped prepare the house for you. A uh, woman's touch, I thought. My wooden future. <clears throat> I uh, built this house. I, I cut the wood myself. <clears throat> We'd uh, best get in out of the rain. Baines, would you? Yes. Yeah, I'll deal with them, man. <coughs> Goodbye, Miss McGrath. Both of you. Goodbye, sir. There uh, are two bedrooms. You would probably like to have one of them to yourselves. Uh, a long journey, a strange place. Uh, I expect that uh, 
Well, I see Aunt Morag has laid the tea. We have a fire, as you can see. There's no shortage of wood here, that is one thing. <laughs> what is that thing outside, Mr. Stewart? Uh, that is the well and the pump. I have planted a peach, a pear and an apple. They each bear a little fruit now in the late summer. Mama, I don't want to stay here. I'm afraid you must. <laughs> Behind this uh, curtain is what I use as the bathroom. You will see uh, this is a rather fine jug and basin which I brought with me from Scotland. I've taken very good care of it. Look, it is not chipped or Mama, cracked. Mama! You must say if there's anything you need. I must... Uh, I thought a photograph. Uh, excuse me, uh, I have to let the Reverend Septimus know you are here. Make yourself comfortable. Mama! I shall not be long. Mama! Mama, where is the pretty? Behind the curtain there is a chamber pot. <laughs> In, Mercy. Oh. This will be the new wife. The new wife. The new and severe and rather practical dresses, plain cloth and simple lace collars, also very proper, I'll be bound. Door, Nessie. Uh, door, Morag. No big tartan, no fancy velvet trimmings and lace caps to cover their hair. I am Morag, Alistair's aunt, and this is Nessie, my companion. <laughs> I can't tell you how pleased I am that my nephew has a new wife. How do you do? How do you do, my dear? It's a hard life here, you'll find. Oh, take no notice of her. Well, now, we shall have to make sure Alistair thickens you up. We must keep our strength up, eh? Eh? It's a hard life, so, and you know it, Maura. Oh, don't frighten that child before she's arrived. And this will be little Aunt Flora. My name is Flora, and I speak for my mother. Oh. Tea, Nessie. A tea, Morag. She hears perfectly well. And she can write things down if she wishes to ask you a question. Oh, splendid, splendid. Now, Nessie, you pour some tea while I show Ada here the present I have brought her. Certainly, Morag. The kettle is nearly boiling. Good. A gift? How exciting. Well, it is not exactly a gift. There. What is it? It is a dress. A wedding dress. But it has no back. It's like an apron. Well, it is only for the photograph. What photograph? Uh, Alistair thought it would be nice to mark the occasion with a photograph of the wedding. Well, I know the wedding has been. Oh, the wedding definitely has been. We heard. By post, we heard. Uh, your tea, Morag. Oh, thank you. And yours, Ada. And little Flora. I am only little because I am young. <laughs> Now, my dear, put your arms through here and here. Now, let's see how it looks. It's horrible, Mama. Lace. A useless lace There, apron. now, just, just tie these tapes. So. And so. Lift your arm, please. Good. And now... Oh. Oh, dear, it's ripped. Oh, oh never mind. I'll pin it. My real father was a famous German composer. Your what? Well, I never. Flora, what are you talking about? I met when my mother was an opera singer in Luxembourg. An opera singer? Little minx. But we thought, we had Alistair say. I want to be in the photograph with Mama. Oh, I, oh. Aunt Morag and uh, Nessie, good day to you both. Good day, nephew. And Morag, the Reverend Septimus is here on the veranda. Ah, he is going to take your portrait, Ada, my dear. A marriage in a lace apron. Well, well. Uh, come along now. Let me smooth your hair, nephew. Oh, 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 Morag. There, then, that's better. I want to be in the photograph. Oh, we shan't be long, Morag. Yes, they will. Nessie will look after the child. Oh. Well, now, come along. Now then, my oh. dear. Um, tell me some more about your home. Uh, you know, I was born in Scotland myself. My mother and father knew each other in Scotland. I thought you said she met your father in Luxembourg. Well, yes, in Austria, where he conducted the Royal Orchestra. Oh, indeed. And where did they get married? In an enormous forest with real fairies as bridesmaids, oh. each holding a little elf's hand. Flora... No, I tell a lie. It was in a small country church near the mountains. 
Mother used to sing songs in German, and her voice would echo across the valley. Your mother used to sing? Oh, that was before the accident. Accident? One day, when my mother and father were singing together in the forest, a great storm blew up out of nowhere. But so passionate was their singing that they did not notice. Nor did they stop as the rain began to fall. And when their voices rose for the final bars of the duet, a great bolt of lightning came out of the sky and struck my father so that he lit up like a torch. And at the same moment, my mother was struck dumb. She never spoke another word. Oh, my, oh, my. Not another word. My, oh, my. Not another word. So you can see that she is very fortunate to have me to speak for her. I see. Uh, From the shock, that would be... I expect so. Terrible, terrible. (gasps) There, now. It was just like that. Soaked to the damn bone with a damn mockery with the rain turning my piano rotten. Sodden bones and teeth fallen away from the wood. Seawater swirling round its legs. Its feet sodden in their wooden shoes. Its carved legs wet and dripping into the sand. The sand rising round its carved feet. My dear, I shall have to be away for some days. There is some Maori land I am interested in, uh, which I may buy very reasonably. I uh, hope you will spend the time settling in. Should there be any problems, go to Mr. Baines, uh, George Baines, whom you met. He lives only a short distance up the valley. I have drawn you a map, and there are planks laid along the path to keep you clear of the mud. Oh, don't you fret, nephew. We shall keep an eye on her. Now... I have baked a fruit cake, which we shall all pretend is a handsome wedding cake with icing. <laughs> and a beautiful statue of the bride and groom on the top. Nessie, be so good as to make some fresh tea. A fresh tea? An excellent idea, Maura, my dear. man Baines does not cut away the trees around his house. This man has a steep thatched roof down which the sunshine slides. Look, Mama! A horse! We could ride to the beach on the horse and then our feet will stay dry. Oh, I I can see under the door. (laughs) The man is wearing his underwear. Lord, I behave. you have a lovely and kind horse and that you could take us down to the beach if we wanted to go. I see. We could sit on the horse and you could lead us. Then we won't get our feet all muddy. Very well, then. Well done, Flora. I'll just saddle a horse. There's the sea. Oh, yes. Perched on the sand like an enormous piece of driftwood. Look. There's your piano. Poor beached thing. With a bit of luck, it'll still be fairly dry. The oarskins are still there. If you let us off the horse, we can go down there, Mr. Bates. (laughs) Let me help you down. Thank you very much. My mother says 
Thank you very much. Under the thin blue sky, wisps of clouds swim in the thin blue sky, and the sound of the sky. Good time. What are you doing? We are playing the piano. What? Your mother is pretending that the table is the piano. Oh no, we do not pretend. Under the tablecloth is the piano. It is hiding. Isn't it clever? Oh, let me see. What have you done? What have you done to the table? I told you. This table is the piano. First of all, I drew the keyboard on the top and then Mama did it properly. Cut, cut, cut with the kitchen knife. Look, you can learn all the keys. Middle C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp. You see, there's no E sharp because that is F. You can learn a scale if you want to. There, there is one called C major. I see. Yes, I see. Very good. Ada, do you mean to say that you have cut into my table with the kitchen knife? Mama says, would you like some tea? Tea? Why, yes, that would be... No, I'm on my way to visit Aunt Mora. Take her some wood for the mission house. Yes, that is it. Some wood for Aunt Mora. I'll pick up beans on the way. Shall we wait supper for you? Supper? Oh, no, no, please, No! <laughs> Tea, Alistair. Uh, thank you, Aunt Morag. Yes, eh? A tea. Yes, Morag. Right away. Oh, why do you not take your tea with your wife and daughter? I like coming here, Aunt Morag. You have a real home now. This reminds me of Scotland. I like it here. Oh, shift those angel wings from the chair, Nessie. Alistair oh. must have something to sit on to take his tea. I, I hope you'll 
bring Ada to the Christmas play, Alistair. Mm. We are all working very hard. Oh. That's the uh, last of the wood, Miss Morrick. Oh, well, sit down then and have your tea. Uh, Desi? Tea for Mr. Baines. Uh, right away, Morak. Yes, um, uh, tea, Mr. Baines. Yes, please, Miss Nessie. Uh, a scone. Thank you. What you making, Miss Morai? Oh, costumes for the Christmas play. Oh, look, now this is a sheet, and these slits are the slits that the heads will go through. Now show him, Nessie. Oh, oh, here and here. There. Oh, <laughs> I am a ghost. Whoosh, whoosh. In the play, they'll be dead. The Reverend is going to use blood. No doubt it will be very dramatic. It will be very dramatic. More tea, Nessie. Uh, oh, more tea, of course. Uh, more tea. Oh, take the sheet off first, Nessie. Oh, yes, uh, yes, take off the sheet. What would you think if someone played a kitchen table like a piano? What nonsense. How can you play a kitchen table? Oh. Did you hear that, Nessie? Play a kitchen table? Well, I never did. It doesn't make any sound. Of course it doesn't. A table is not a piano. Nessie, please. I knew she was mute. Oh, we all knew she was mute. Oh, poor thing. Enough, Nessie. It is the Lord's will. But now I'm thinking that perhaps it is more than that. I'm wondering if her brain is affected. Affected? No doubt she misses her piano. What? Well, I, I must say she was very rough with the gown I brought for your wedding photograph. Well, she tore a chunk of lace off it. I had to use a pin to hide the tear. Well, it hasn't come to anything yet. Just something of concern, that's all. I think her brain is perfectly fine. She's just mute, that's all. With all due respect to you, Baines, you do not have a great deal of experience of these matters. Not do any of us, Stuart. We must speak as we find. And she loves her piano. How would you know? I think she does, that's all. I don't know. She can't say what she feels. Well, it is a concern, certainly. Well, there is something to be said for silence, of course. And with time she will, I am sure, become affectionate. Oh, certainly. Well, there's nothing so easy to like as a pet, and they're quite silent. Well, I'll give you the tea, Aunt Borag. I must be going. Oh. I'll walk along with you. Goodbye, Alistair. Mm. Mr. Bings. Goodbye now, Miss Borag. Miss Nessie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Those 80 acres that cross the stream. Yes. What do you think of them? On your property? Yes. Good flattish land with reliable water. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Would you be interested in the land? Well, yes. Well, then. <laughs> I don't have the money. Well, uh, I'd like to make a swap. Exchange. What for? The piano. The piano? What piano? Well, the piano on the beach. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought you met my kitchen table. I thought you... Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's not marshy, is it, the land? Oh, no. The drainage is excellent. Well, as I thought, what would you want with a piano? Music. Can you play the piano? Beans, a music lover. Hidden talents, I never would have thought. Well... I'd have to get lessons, of course. <laughs> Wouldn't be much use to me without lessons. Yes. I suppose you would. Yes. Well, Ada can play. I have it in the letter that she plays well. Of course, uh, it would have to be brought up from the beach. Oh, I'd arrange that. You would? I see. So, there we are. What do you think, Ada? She says it's her piano and she won't have him touch it. Oh, dear. She says he's an oaf. He can't read. He's ignorant. He has done very well for himself. He wants to improve himself. 
And if the piano is in his house, then you will be able to go and play it. My mother says the piano is hers. She wants it here. Uh, 80 acres is a very good trade. A very good trade. You will stop breaking my crockery, which I brought all the way from Scotland. Do you hear? Do you hear? Enough! We are a family now, and we all make sacrifices. You will teach him to play the piano, that is that. And you can play on the damn piano yourself. Mama says she doesn't know how to teach. She only knows how to play. They can begin with children's tunes. <laughs> Just be encouraging. Remember, he is bringing the piano back from the beach. He is making a lot of effort, and 80 acres is a very good trade. Well? <laughs> Mama says only as long as she doesn't get bored. Well, that is something. Uh, what do you think? Look how rosy and shiny. It wasn't the sea. I've cleaned and oiled it. Uh, and I rubbed the keys with wax. Say, look. It uh, looks good. Very good. It's a very nice looking thing. Well done, Baines. I hope that you are content with your side of the bargain. Get it up from the beach. Did the horse drag it? Hear me, no. I took eight of the Maori men. Mother says, what state was it in when you found it again? Well, some of the boards have been pulled away again. But as you can see, apart from the damage done by the salt, it's as good as new. The uh, girls are very excited about the lessons. Flora will explain everything that Ada says. I do with her fingers. You can't believe see just with their hands. It's a marvel to watch them at the breakfast table. Now then, uh, Ada, uh, I shall leave you. Uh, Mr. Baines will bring you back after the lesson is over. Thanks, old chap. <coughs> well, shall we begin? What am I to do first? My mother wants to see your hands. Hold them out. Oh, very well. Well, like this? No, like this. Bunch the fingers up and then turn them over. Yes, <laughs> like that. Good. I'm afraid they're rather large hands. You have to wash them. They're clean. Wash them again. <laughs> These are scars and hardened skin. The marks don't come off. Mama, should you try scrubbing them? Mother says you should scrub them so that we can see. Anymore. You don't wish me to remove my skin, do you? There's no tune left in the piano. She can't teach you. It is a uh, a broadwood. Oh, a fine instrument. I've not seen one here, uh, nor in New South Wales, where I have tuned some two hundred pianos. Really? Mm. It is unusual, then. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the strings are crisscrossed in the manner of all boxed grants. <laughs> Scent. And uh, salt, of course. Someone has saved it from the sea. Very lovingly. Uh, what 
will you play when it's tuned? I can't play. You don't play. Oh dear. Oh dear me. <laughs> oh dear, dear me. Well, my dear Miss Broadwood. I understand you better than you know. My wife, you see, sang with a bell clear tone. After we married, she stopped. She said that she didn't feel like singing. She said that life made her sad. And that's how she lives. Her lips clamped over a perfect voice. Oh, this piano will not be silent. I intend to learn how to play it. Good for you. Only take care not to let a woman with a beautiful voice anywhere near it. Too many clothes. Too many clothes. Pantaloons. Hoops, petticoats, bodices, stays, chemises, stays, purple tartan, black tartan, blue tartan, a high collared dress, or one of the silks, a silk, no stays. Good morning, Mrs. Stewart. Flora? I hope you scrubbed your hands. <laughs> I'm going to show you some scales. It's a tune. Stale loaf of bread on the table. I am teaching him the scales, Mama. Open smoking fire. C major and A minor. I know how. <laughs> But I can't play. But you must be able to do something. I want to listen to you. Uh, to Mrs. Stewart. Uh, and learn that way. But everyone has to practice. I don't know how to practice. Lift the piano lid. Ow! You nearly caught my finger. Hey, look here. The girl told me to lift the lid. Mama, play him a scale. Show him. Well... Now you are listening. Well, now you have listened. Well, now, is that enough for you? That is lovely. Is that how I must practice? Mother will play now. May I go outside and play with Flynn, Mr. Bates? Of course. Yes, my darling. Sign me a story. What about, my darling? About my father. Father is busy on his estate. That is why he's away from home so much. I don't mean that man. I mean my real father. He is your real father now. He would never be my real father. Real fathers sleep in their beds with real mothers and you sleep with me. That is just the way it is here, my love. Your face is very smooth, Mama. Was he a teacher? Yes, he was. How did you speak to him? I didn't need to speak to him. I could lay my thoughts out in his mind. As if it was a sheet of blank paper. <laughs> Why didn't you get married? He became frightened and stopped listening. It's only me. Papa. Go away. Mama is telling.
telling me a story? Shall I kiss you goodnight, Ada? No, you shan't. You keep away from us. I've not always lived in the jungle. Once I lived in, on the sea, in a village outside Hull, in England. I lived in a fishing community. Everyone fished for their living. That was long before I built this hut here in the bush. Northeast England it was. He has strange eyes. He looks at me, and even when he looks at me, it is as if he is not looking at me with the whole of his eyes, as if a corner of those eyes is somewhere else, seeing something else. You know how some people feel the ground beneath their horses when they're riding? I was like that with a boat. I could feel the sea beneath the bottom of my boat. As if somewhere else there is blue and oh. blue. I was restless. When I was 16, I wanted to get away. One and two. I saw a grey whale once when I was 12. My father took me on his boat and we were together on our own for the first time. Blue and one and three. I was lying in the sun. My father let me drink his strong coffee. First time he'd ever let me taste his coffee from his flask. And it burned my throat. Made my eyes water. But I didn't want to let him see. Blue, so blue that the sea rocks you to sleep. And then a grey, grey back broke the water. And the calm water surged and I screamed. And my coffee flew into the sea and the whale spouted. And the stench was terrible. And a plume of spray flew in all directions all over us. <laughs> Soaking the boat and us with it. One thousand and one hundred and ten and one droplets in the air in the blue, blue, grey time of the sea. From then on, I hated the sea. I was afraid of it. It was not a kind thing. Then I became the thing that gave me the most fear. I became a whale hunter. Tawa, your hands and your fingers are on my back. Sperm whale, a white whale, a right whale of southern latitudes, and the men I worked with, and the women in the ports, and I learned to love the whales as they died, and I learned to love the whales as they were flayed and sea for oil, and their bones, and ambergris. Just one moment, and your hands were gone. And then I did what such men do. I married a girl in Hull. We set up housekeeping in rooms overlooking the high street. We had savings in the bank. I had a new job in the port. Elizabeth could cook and sew. I never learned how to read. A moment, a mood, a melody, a nothing. Then here one day we looked at one another and we were bored. I could not live without the sea. She couldn't live without other men. So we returned to our old ways. What in hell's name did you think you were doing, Delwa? I gave her money. And I booked my passage for the South Seas. Couldn't you tell the difference between me and anyone else? You were special to me. When our ship sighted the whales, I felt a great rush of pleasure. Like coffee on a cold day. I would not kill again. I 
watch the beasts rising from the waves. I wish he would sit down when I play. I wish he would not pace around the room. I refuse to kill again. And when he sits down to hear me play, I wish he would not bow his head in that way. I can watch the beasts rise from the waves, you see. He sits in a corner of the room, watching me and the whole room round me. They're grey and beautiful, and their backs are rounded, you see. Then he moves to the other side of me and places his chair so he has to look at me sideways. Sometimes the sun strikes their underbellies and reflects a dull, transparent white. Then he shifts his chair to the other side of the piano. Don't you want to play? How can you not want to play? She bends over the keys, caressing their white bellies. She sways from side to side. She bends and bends. There is some heat that comes from him as he passes. It's not a smell exactly. As I pass behind her, there's a heat that comes from her. It's not a scent exactly. I have lost nothing, Delwa. Look at my wrists. Look at my fingers. Remember. Your hands are so very supple. Your fingers taper, strong and delicate. You taught me too well, Delwa. If I close my eyes... I learned my lessons too well. I can feel her fingers on my back. Up and down with vertebrae. Slicking the oil between my ribs. You forced me to learn my lessons too well. If I open my eyes... Bastard! You've fashioned your hair differently today. You're plumper somehow. The thin elaborate plaits that curl about your ears. Leave your neck quite bare. Damnable bastard! And a long, white neck still down from your head. I have never been so cold again. Oh, please. Damnable, 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 damnable! Please, God, please don't go. Damnable! Please. Damnable. Away. Damnable. I do not want you to go. Damnable. I didn't expect it. Damnable. I couldn't have known. Damnable. Huh? Damnable. Please. Damnable. Please. Damnable. Down again. Damnable. Just for a moment. Damnable. Just a moment. Of your neck. Damnable! No. Please, no. I will not touch you again. I promise. A nape of your neck is perfect. Damnable! Damnable! There's a way you can have your piano back. Do you want it back? Please, look at me. Do you want it back? You see, I would like us to make a deal. There are things I would like to do while you play. <laughs> if you let me, you can earn it back. What do you think? One visit for each key. Do you agree? I do not understand you. You, you don't agree? One visit. I see. No one visit for every black key. That's a lot less. That's half. That's less than half. Very well. All right then. All right then. But just the black keys. Mama, Mama, it's going to rain, and poor Finn doesn't want to be outside in the rain. 
Your mother's giving me a lesson, Flora. I want to speak to my mother. You must stay outside, Flora. I don't want to be outside. I want to watch. You must stay outside and play while I am giving a lesson. I'll be very quiet. No. I'll play with Finn in the corner. He's very shy. He won't want someone to watch him having a lesson. He's a beginner. I won't look at him. No, Flora. You must wait outside. How long must I wait outside? Settle down, children, settle down. Oh, what a racket. Be quiet, children, and the Reverend will come and rehearse your song with you. Alistair, pass me the scissors. Here you are, Admiral Rack. Thank you. Now, the moons go here and the stars go here. Now, you keep them in their separate boxes so that when you come to do the ones, you don't get them in the muddle. Is that clear? Uh, yes, Admiral Rack. Clear as day, Mora. Well, it would never do if we stuck our moons and stars on top of each other all higgledy piggledy, would it? Oh, no, Mora. It wouldn't do at all at all. Higgledy piggledy, not at all. Yes, you carry on with your practicing, man. I am carrying on, Mora. Children, children. Oh, silver paper, Missy. In the box by your right. <laughs> now, children, this year our nativity play is going to be a little different. Now. You all know the story of the nativity, don't you? Yes, Reverend Campbell. The story of the nativity is the story of the birth of Jesus, isn't it? Yes, Reverend. Star, Nessie. Star, Morag. By your left hand, Morag. And this year we're going to have something a little unconventional now. And do you all know what the word unconventional means? No. Tea, Nessie. I will show you what I mean. Tea, Morag. Brood, I just have to pour it. And pour away, Nessie. Uh, yes, Morag. I'll pour away then, shall I? Please, Nessie. Uh, Reverend, will you take some tea now? Uh, not just at the minute, Nessie. Uh, put the tea down and come up here and put your hand out. Oh. <gasps> now, watch very carefully, children. Oh, dear. Uh, Morag. Oh, do as the Reverend says, Nessie. Oh, Morag. Yeah. Could you use Mr. Stewart? I have the teacups, the sweet biscuits, and the cakes to sell. No one else will know what to do. Yes, say, please. Uh, yes, uh, yes, of course, Morag. Uh, on the other yes, hand, yes, uh, yes, Morag. Dear. Good. <laughs> now come up here, Nessie. Good. Uh, now kneel down, please, Nessie. Uh, uh, there, a little more to the right. Oh. Yes, yes, that's good. Uh, I must say, Reverend, if you do not mind my mentioning it, the angel's wings look beautiful on you, yes. as if they were made for you. If you do not mind... Yes, yes, put out your hand, Missy. Uh, oh, no, Reverend, not me. Oh, it is only a cardboard axe, Missy. Don't be silly. Yes, put out your hand. Oh, very well, then. No, 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 higher, higher. Oh. No, then. Uh, uh, there, your hand has been chopped off. Did you see that, children? Oh, but you missed me. Uh, uh, make a fist. You lift your hand. Now look again. Good. Now look at your shadow on the wall. There, to your left. You see, children? Now you're being attacked. I raise my axe. Uh, bring it down. <laughs> so. And in the shadow on the wall, my axe chops your right hand off. Oh, how gruesome. <laughs> you are the reverend, the axe murderer, <laughs> and I am the helpless victim. <laughs> oh, how very exciting. Again, again. That's enough now, Nessie. The tea will be cold. Oh. Uh, with the blood, it will be a very good effect, eh, Morag? Uh, what sort of blood? Why, animal blood, of course. You did not think I was going to use real blood. No. Oh. <laughs> well, dear children, this is the story of Bluebeard. 
This is the story of what happens to Bluebeard's wives, for he was a very, very wicked man and killed all his wives. <laughs> now we shall all sing away in the manger. Nessie, please. Uh-huh. Welcome, Mrs. Stewart. No, that won't do. Welcome, Miss Ada McGrath. No. Welcome, Ada. Please come in. It is basic, certainly, yes. But that is all a bachelor needs, you see. My dear Miss Ada McGrath. One room. A sleeping alcove, cleverly and discreetly separated from the main living room by a curtain. The windows are shuttered. No, glass, of course. That's a commodity not yet easily obtainable in the New Zealand bush. Of course, it is only a temporary edifice. And in time, I shall build something more suitable and appropriate to our standing in life. But I think that for the time being you will want nothing for comfort and find nothing wanting in its simplicity. It has served me very well for the past nine years. I love you, Miss Ada McGrath. Look at you, you beauty. Look at the light making you blush. Dust on rosewood. Kill the dust gently. Gently kill the dust with long, slow, smooth sweeps of my hand on your back. Along the skin of your neck. On the nape of your keyboard. And watch the dust defy me and settle after I've brushed it away. Why, that will not do. Not at all. You must be smooth and beautiful for me. I'll take my shirt off, Miss Ada McGrath. There now. Wipe you over along the lid. Long, smooth, sweet strokes. My night shirt's still warm from my sleep. Warming your night as the sun warms my back. There. And there you are, my dear Miss Ada McGrath. What do you think of me, Miss Ada McGrath? Am I as warm as you are? Like the day we arrived, a green jungle lit up by tiny filters of light. What is your name, bird? I shall call you Bird the Wilderall. Oh, Mama, can I come and listen to you play? Such a jumble of living and dead. Please. Such a pale curl of new ferns. Oh, pretty Bird the Wilderall, please. Oh, well... Lily Wynne and I will suffer loneliness then. No one loves him any more than anyone loves me. But I don't care. I hope Mr. Silly Banks doesn't mind all the mud on your dress. Come on then, Flinny. Come on. Come on then. Ah, come in. Come in. Oh. 
I have dusted the piano. Got rather dusty. You'll find it very clean. He looks as if he has been drinking. I am pleased to see you. He is flushed, ruddy, sparking with energy. I'm ready when you are. What is in store for me today? Well, a secret is a secret. A secret for one is a secret for two. Leans on his elbow. Stares at me. I feel the goose pimples on my arm. Hairs on my arm rise to greet his eyes. His eyes travel along my arm. His eyes travel to my neck. Your skirt. The man is mad. I said, lift your skirt, please. You are completely mad. My face burns. My feet are muddy. Please. One black key, remember? Every visit, one black key. Oh, you love the mud on my shoes. A little more. You may continue playing. I would like some music to practice when you're not here. I'd like some music to keep the dust off the piano. Lift your skirt a little higher, please. Why should you lie on the hard floor for pleasure? Everything. Hoops as well. Why has no one else asked me to do these things? I can see your pantaloons. I can see your black woolen stockings. Mad. Completely mad. Have a small hole in your black woolen stocking just beneath the legs. How deftly I move the pedals. How deftly your calves move in their shapely, shapely black woolen stockings with a small hole just beneath the white lace. My white skin must be very white. How white the lace is against your black lace. My white lace burns against my skin. This is you. This is Miss Ada McGrath. Such grubby fingers, such tobacco and wood. How do you do? Miss Aiden McGrath. Tell what? How did you lend him your hands? How do you do? Miss Aiden McGrath. How can you play the piano, Delwa? When another man has borrowed your hands. Undo your dress. I knew it. I shall sit in the corner. I shall look at me. Not circle the prey. You may give me a silver case and pencil. Come. There. It's here on the table, by the window. It's quite safe. You're quite safe. Stop 
already taken your jacket off. And you may play again. Am I enjoying this? You may hang your jacket on the chair. Do I gain any pleasure from this? I am burning. A soft white bodice with short sleeves. I see now. You may play again. I'm cold. Now put your jacket round me. Well, perhaps you will not like me to put your jacket over my work shirt. Very well. I will remove my shirt. Shoulders. Such a whiteness on your shoulders. Strong, strong arm. Delicate network of blue green veins under your arms. Such fine. Fine forearms. Like a leaf. Fine hairs filtering to his wrists. The backs of your hands are brown from the sun. Transparent wrists. The backs of your hands are burnished from the sun. My hands on your arm. My hands under your arm. <gasps> Two keys. Two black keys. If I put my hand on yours, all I want to do is keep my hand under your wrist as you play, and I will know what to do when I practice the scale. Mm. Won't play a scale for me. You have such narrow wrists, such a fine wrist. I need to know how the upper arm moves. Yes. Yes, I think I do. That will be enough for today. I will practice the C major scale. Oh, stand still now, Flora Child. Nessie, pins. Pins, Morag. But it's so itchy, Aunt Morag. Oh, Aunt Morag, I like that. Oh. <laughs> it is high time you called your stepfather father, child. Ouch! Oh, but he's not my father. No more he is, Morag. Well, even so, we'd bear it to her mother. He's there for her father. Have you finished? Nearly, just another few pins. Why, child, patience, patience. You're patient enough with your mother. Oh, oh. Mama and I understand each other. I don't need patience. Nearly there. Oh. oh, you'll be the most beautiful little angel in the play, you see. Your hands are like wings, child, when you make those signals. Signs. It is called signing. So clever. I could teach you. Oh, no. I could never learn to wave my hands about in the air. Oh, it's easy. Look. Oh. Oh. That means I shall listen hard at rehearsal because I live too far away to go off and... Which word is rehearsal? This one? Oh, I could never learn it. I can't imagine a fate worse than being dumb. What about being deaf? Oh, I deaf. Oh, too, too terrible. Awful. Uh -huh. Actually, to tell you the whole truth, Mama says most people speak rubbish and it's not worth the listen. Well, that is a strong opinion. Aye, it is unholy. Unholy, eh? Unholy, Morag. The child says it is unholy. Mm. Well, there, you may get down now. <sighs> oh, the angels' wings fit you most perfectly, don't they, Nessie? Oh, most perfectly, Morag. I take off my jacket. I play in my bodice. My arms are freer. One arm, then two. The jacket sits over the back of my chair. Its arms, one and two, enclosing the back of my chair. And then he comes and takes my jacket. One and two and three and four and smooths the cloth with his hand, stroking and stroking. One and two 
three, four, and five, and my warm jacket feels his warm body, and the hairs on his chest, for he has begun again from where he left off and wears no shirt, but inhales the sweat and my perfume, and my body rises from my jacket and into his body, through his nostrils, and this man's nose nuzzles my arms, one and two, and he could never harm me or my music, and he plays and plays on my buttons, one and two and seven, and his eyes are closed and his long and curling eyelashes, one and two and at least twenty-seven, brush my arms. Now, what now? Four keys, Ada. Four keys, if I may kiss you. Just once. And if you will come with me to my bed. <laughs> Five? Why five? I just want to lie. All right, all right, five. Come. Come. Lie down beside me. Please. Remove your boots. Take the laces through the holes. Let me do it for you. There. One, two, three, four. So many small eyelets. We agree. A bird is singing outside. One key. Two keys. Three keys. Four keys. Five keys. I have to go to rehearse the play. Ada, please. Ada, don't go yet. Mama, the lesson is over. Mama, are you ready? Your boots, Ada. Here. I will talk to Flora. Yes, yes. She, she's just getting on my own day. I have to go to a rehearsal, Mr. Baines. This year I am to be an angel, but next year I'm to play the baby Jesus and everyone will have to do as I say. Mama, are you ready? The Reverend Campbell is going to play all about a nasty man who kills his wives. And Mrs. Williams and Mrs. Parsons and Mrs. Reed and Mrs. Palmer are all going to pretend to have their heads cut off. I think it's silly. Mother, come on, we must go. Goodbye, Mrs. Stewart. I'll see you in three days. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. Mother, it's funny to have a warm Christmas. How can the snow come in warm, Mother? Mama? Mama? Missy, I want a few more chairs over here by the door. A few more chairs, Morag. Oh, I hope Ballester is not too late. We will need our little angel. Now, children, I hope you've all made proper use of the privet. There will be no running off the stage once we start it. And angels, please do not kiss each other. Your lipstick will run. Angels, do not kiss each other. Good evening, Aunt Morag. Oh, Alistair. And Ada, good evening, my dear. 
Oh, and little Fred. Look at my wings, Anne Morag. Oh, a little angel, Morag. An angel with long ringlets, so I hope you're proud of her, Ada, dear. Oh, and Mr. Baines. Good evening, Mr. Baines. Baines, good evening. Uh, found your top hat, I see. <laughs> Most suitable. Are you going to play something for us tonight, then, Baines? Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, but uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. No, I don't think so, really. Oh. Not ready, eh? Well, I'm not quite. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Stewart. Flora? I am an angel with ringlets and wings, Mr. Baines. Uh, come along, Ada. We shall uh, sit down. Uh, look, Mr. Baines. I am in costume. Do you like it? Why? <laughs> Very nice. I have to wear a wedding dress because of my part in the play, you see. Yes, I see. Come along now, Flora. Come and join the other children. Doesn't Flora make a lovely angel? So like her mother, the poor thing. It's a terrible punishment to be struck down, don't you think, Mr. Baines? Though she looks quite radiant tonight, that red silk is a little vulgar. But she has the figure to carry it off, if you will pardon me for saying so. And you a bachelor. Oh, don't tell Morag I said so. Oh, they look such a handsome couple. Oh, they're holding hands. Morag will be so pleased. Excuse me, Miss Nessie. Oh, but Mr. Baines. Baines, old fellow, uh, come and sit by us. Ladies and gentlemen... We'll move along a little later, dear. Uh, George will sit with us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin this. Please take your seats. Come along, children. Nice and quiet now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight, uh, before our customary nativity play, we would like to entertain you with the story of the infamous Bluebeard, a man who had a great many wives. Bluebeard took unto himself a young bride, and one day she came upon a secret door in his castle. She opened the door and crept up the stairs, and what did she find? All of Bluebeard's former wives with their severed heads still bleeding and their eyes still crying. Is he? You are on. Oh, yes. Um, I am the young bride, and here... In front of the curtain, Nessie, in front of all the heads. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much, ladies and gentlemen. We shall serve orange squash and biscuits at the back of the hall, and then the children will perform our nativity play. Oh. How many is that now? Thirteen. Do what you like. Play what you like. I hated seeing you with your hand in his. I want to lie together without any clothes on today. How many keys would that be? Yes. Ten keys. Two hands. One, two, ten fingers. Ten keys. We shall both undress. Everything. I will touch you as you touch the piano keys. That is all. I promise. Careful! 
are they doing? Mr. Bangs, Mr. Bangs, what is happening? Where is the piano going? I've given the piano back to you, Mrs. Stewart. It's yours. Your shoulders. What do you mean? It is your piano, not Mama's now. I've had enough. Your fingers. You've had enough lessons, is that it? But you can't play anything yet. No. Mama. No. Laura. No. Will you find Flynn for me, please? But, but I need to tell you what Mama says. I think he ran out of the house when the men came to move the piano. Oh, very well. Why? Flynn. Why? I want you to care for me. But you can't. This arrangement's making you into a prostitute. A whore. And it's making me feel wretched. Quite wretched. It's yours. The piano is yours again. Please. I want you to have it. What are you up to? Go away. Look here, here, Baines. I don't think you should have given up the piano. I'll make sure that you're properly taught with music written on sheets and so on. You should have told me she wasn't keeping to our agreement. I will speak to her. She is not a bad woman. She will learn how to teach you properly. I don't want to learn. You don't want to learn? Then why the hell did you do all this in the first place? I don't want to learn to play the piano. What about our bargain? I, I can't afford to pay for the land if that is what you're thinking. Oh. No payment is necessary. The land's yours. I've given the piano back. It's yours too. Well, I can play the damn thing. It was more to your wife that I gave it. Oh, oh I see. Well... That is something entirely different. Uh, I expect she will appreciate it. Well. Now. Please. Could you leave me? I'm not well. I'm not well. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Uh, sorry to have, uh, well, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much indeed on Ada's behalf. <laughs> he doesn't want payment, Ada. Not for the piano and not for the land. Isn't that strange? 80 acres is not a lot. But there is a stream that runs through the land that will feed the lower pastures. Your hands are so small, so warm. It fits so comfortably into mine, like a dove. That is rubbish! Her hand is like a hand. A dove has feathers, not fingers. It's just a way of showing... I like your mother's hands. Do you like my hands? Yes, yes, I do. Is the piano all right? Can you play it properly? I can play. Shall I play something, Mama? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to hear you play. Play a jig for me. Oh, Mama, do I know any jigs? Oh, yes, I know that one. Don't feel like a jig. Play a song then. Oh, I am come to the low country. Oh, come. Ada, my love, you have your piano back. You can play whenever you like. What is the matter with them? 
Why does she wander off, forget the damn thing back, and she just wanders off? Why? She's stupid. Why has she run away? Where has she gone? I don't care where. I hope she falls fish down in the boiling mud. I hope wild dogs bite her. I hope she goes to hell. Come on, Flora. Come and help me feed the chickens. Would you like that? <sighs> yes. Yes, all right. I hate her. I hate her. No, you don't. You should hate her as well. Nonsense. We shall feed the chickens, and then I will go and find her, and we will have tea and scones together. Come on. Who's that? What? Oh. It's you. Well, what brings you here? Oh. Please. Excuse me. I was resting. Does he know something? Does he suspect anything? Ada. Ada. I am unhappy. I'm unhappy because I want you. My mind is seized on you and I can think of nothing else. I want to know how much I suffer. And this is how I suffer. I'm sick with longing. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I lie down on my bed and my mind turns over and over. And I think about what I am to do. And I think about how I am to talk to you. And I wonder what you think. And I wonder what you feel. And I wonder what would happen if we could talk to each other. And I can't sleep. Do you have any feeling for me? <laughs> if you come with no feeling for me, then go. Go, I don't want you to stay. Go. Go, please, go. Please, just leave. What a thing it is not to be able to tell someone you love them. When you to hear someone tell you they love you. I love you. I love you. Even though I still can't play the damn piano. I love you. I love you. I love you. This time, Ada, you can undress me.
Ain't I? I shall have to do the talking for both of us. I love the dark. I love it when the light seeps in through the walls. <laughs> oh, I was afraid I was going to crush you. You're strong. You're lovely. I love you. Ada. You're going already? Or will you come again? Ada. I need to know! What, what will you do? Will you come again? Ada. I don't know what you're thinking. Do you love me? <laughs> come tomorrow. If the answer is yes, come tomorrow. when they look away from home. I shall do what other men do. I shall cut up lengths of board and I shall nail them over the windows. I shall cover every single gap until no light comes in. And then, whenever I leave the house, I shall lock the door behind me and take the key with me. And then I shall fix a second bolt on the outside of the front door. Then we shall see how easily and quickly you will run to visit Mr. George Bean. Well, now, Alistair, I do think you have gone a little too far. We both think you've gone a little too far. Hmm. How do you mean, Aunt Morag? You have put the other latch on the outside, you see. When you close the door and lock it, it's on the outside. Anyone can come along and lock you in. Lock you in? Morag is right. Of course I'm right, Missy. Yes, Morag. <laughs> With the latch on the outside, you're quite trapped in the house. Oh, well, now, Nessie, you unpack the cake so we can have some tea. Uh, tea? Yes, my lad. We have just come from George Baines. Mr Baines is leaving, you know. What do you mean, leaving? Oh, we think he's had enough. He's quite altered. 
Almost as if he's bewitched. Plate, please, Nessie. A plate, Morag. Here you are. Thank you. I see. Beans is packing up. Well, he has nothing to pack up, but he is leaving. I, I shall miss him. Oh, I like him. Nessie has foolishly grown an affection for him. <laughs> Don't stop it at once, Nessie. Yes, Morag. Well, it was a noble sacrifice of Alistair to take them both in. Oh, I wish they did not all seem so miserable, so without sunlight. But she does play the piano so beautifully oh. and composes. That must be a great joy to Alice, dear. You know, I have been thinking of the piano. Hmm. She does not play the piano as we do, Nessie. How do you mean, Morag? Oh, she's a strange creature and her playing is strange. Like a mood that passes into you. I know what you mean, Morag, dear. Mm, now, your playing, Nessie, is plain and true, and that is what I like. Oh, you are kind to see so, Morag, mm, my dear. To have a sound creep inside you is not at all pleasant. Not at all pleasant. No, Morag. I'm sure it isn't at all pleasant. I come into your room at night. Alistair? My husband? Are you asleep? Am I asleep? I stroke your back. Alistair? Are you awake? Ease your nightgown away from you. Hey, you don't my die. I stroke you. Stroke you. Up and down. You are warm. As warm as Mr. George Payne's. As warm as Mr. Delwar Hausler. I want to touch you. Why can I touch you? Do you like me? Do you like me? Like you? Like me. Like you? Like me. Well, I've taken all the planks down. Good. Can we go out again? Yes, but you won't see Baines. I don't want to see Baines, but I shall miss Flinny. He's my friend. I've decided to trust you to stay here. You must not go out. We will be very good, stepfather. I promise. Good. Would you like some tea now? Uh, yes, uh, please. Perhaps with time, you might come to like me, Ada. Oh, Mummy likes you, I know. Well, uh, we shall see. Oh, is it cold? Shall I make it hot again? No, no, uh, I must go out and repair some fences today. I will, I will see you both at tea. Goodbye, Stepfather. Carefully, Flora. But what are you doing? The needle is hot from the candle. Dear George. Why are you writing on the piano key?
take this to George Baines. It belongs to him. No, it doesn't. It belongs to the piano. Anyway, we are not supposed to visit him. I am not to visit him, but you are not bound by the request. I want to stay here with you. Do as I say, Flora. But, Mama! Now, Flora. No, oh, you, you, and you, and you, and all of you. Oh, the Grand Duke of here. He had 10,000 fields. He fenced them up to the crest of the hill. Then he bought a piano. Oh, the grand old duke of nothing. He made his fences all rotten and crooked. He hammered all the fields till they fell into the sea. Then he went home again to miss his nothing. Laura! What is it? Is something wrong? Nothing at all wrong. What are you doing? Working. What are you doing? Where is your mother? At home. She sent me with a message. Oh. What is it? Here. Why, you give me a piece of wood. It's a piano key. It's F sharp. It's meant for Mr. Baines. What? I thought it was maybe not a proper thing to do. What? It's got writing on it. Where? Look. Stop the bleeding quickly. Oh. Alistair, go for Dr. Cameron. Hurry. A terrible accident. Yes, a terrible accident. Oh. Yes. Get her up off the floor. Over the poor thing. Oh. Be careful now, Nessie. Oh, oh dear. Poor we then. He will be beside himself. Get some hot water to clean her hand. Bang, did you think? Her eyes are closed. She's fainted. Well, it's just as well. I'll cover her with a blanket. Oh, her hair is so soft, so black and so soft. Uh, one of God's difficult daughters. Yet you can feel him in her, frightening like a storm. Says what? 
don't know what you mean. Ada McGrath, she says, dear George, you have my heart. What's that? <laughs> oh, Flora, dear, you're covered in blood. <laughs> Where is she? No, no. He says first one and then another. And then no, no, no. Don't no, 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 tell me. No, what happened? No, no. Come on, Flora. No, no, tell me. Leave her alone. It cut. The axe cut like a finger. He what? He what? He chopped her finger off. I saw him. I saw him. Oh, kill him. No. Where is she now? I'm boring. And Nancy, go with her. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, come on. <laughs> no, come with me. <laughs> Sit with me. Your wings, that's all. We will be together, and then it will be all better. She'll see. I'll show her, my sweet love bird. Bins! Bins! Where are you? Keep your voice down. The child is sleeping. What do you want? What do I want? Look at you. Just look at you. You are mad. I've seen your face in my head. And I hated it. And hated it. And hated it. And now, here I am looking at you and I see you and it is nothing. You are nothing to me. I'm not afraid of you, Stuart. Has she spoken to you? Has Ada ever spoken to me? Y you mean inside? No. Words. Real words. Have you ever heard words? No. Not words. Are you sure? Have you never heard words? No, no, never. She spoke to me. You mean when you chopped off her finger, you bastard? No, no. She did not understand. I don't know how it happened, but she didn't say a word. Not a word. I mean, in here. In where? In here. I hear a voice in my head. Her lips did not make the words, but the harder I listened, the clearer I heard it, as clearly as I hear my own voice. Spoken words? Sentences? No, no. She does not speak, Dammer. You know she does not speak. You are mad. I know you think it's a trick, that I am making it up. The words I heard were her words and her voice. What were they? May I come inside? No. The child is sleeping. Yes, of course. What were the words she said? She said... I am afraid of my will, of what it might do. It is so strange and strong. I punished her for it. You punished her wrongly. She said, I have to go. Let me go. Let Baines take me away. I love her, you see. That is why I am here. She doesn't care for me at all. I wish I'd gone. I wish you gone. I want to wake up and find that all this is a dream. That I am back in Scotland. And that is what I want. I want myself back. <laughs> I have to tell you, Nessie, I am not sorry. Surely you're glad she has recovered so well, Morag. I mean I am not sorry to see them go. Alistair has not been himself for a very long time. Not himself, no. Oh, oh dear. 
What are you thinking of, Nessie? I liked her, Morag. I'm sorry to see her go. You were an old softy, Nessie. Ah, come on. We'll go and take Alistair some scones. Need them to get on with things themselves. Can I call you George, Mr. Baines? Of course you can. I like you, George. <laughs> I love you, George. Will the piano be all right? Oh, yes. It's very securely tied. Piano is spoiled. Throw it overboard. What's she saying? She says, throw the piano overboard. Throw it in the water. What? She says, throw it in the water. It is spoiled. I don't want it anymore. It's quite safe. It's quite secure. A coffin. She doesn't want it. She says it's spoiled. Overboard. I will look after it. I mean, she'll be able to play it as much as she wants. Push it overboard. She says it is spoiled. But a big dead whale. She says it is a coffin. She says push it overboard. Ada, Ada, sit down. Leave the ropes. Ada, please. It is your piano. I want you to have it. She says it's a big dead whale and she doesn't want it. She says she... Ada. Ada, what are you doing? She says if you won't push it into the sea, she will. She says help her untie the ropes. Mama! Mama! Look out! Ada! Ada! There is no sound underwater. Here, there is stillness. Here am I. I am making my choice. Shall I float free? Shall I pace a balcony? My dark hair covered with a bright lace cloth. The muslin curtains will billow in the soft breeze. The consonants will be hard in my throat. The vowels will float free and open and full of love. I love you, George. <laughs> With my throat and my mouth and with all of me. Even my newly fashioned fingertip. I love my little Flora. All the town wonders about my accident. I smile and teach their children. One, two, three, four, and five fingers on one hand and eight notes in the scale, or is it seven, really? Flora will have new shoes, come straight from England. Flora will have dancing classes. Flora and George and me. I shall float free. Together we shall marvel at the grace that has delivered us. In the Piano by Jane Campion and Kate Pullinger, dramatised by Michelin Wanda, Stella Gone played Ada McGrath and Ian Hogg, Baines. David Bannerman was Alastair Stewart, John Deteen, Delois, and Susan Sheridan, Flora and Young Ada. Aunt Morag was played by Jill Graham, Nessie, Tina Gray, 
the Reverend Campbell Crawford Logan and Whiston McGrath Robert Robertson. Eileen Nicholas played Aunt Patricia, Jan Shand Louisa, Kim Durham the captain and Andrew Melville and Robert James the piano tuners. The musical score was composed by Anthea Gomez and played by Anthea Gomez and Christian Mackay. The piano was directed by Sue Wilson. <laughs>